From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Assembly members with Fairbanks North Star Borough spoke for and against an ordinance set to be voted on tomorrow that bans certain unlisted hydronic heaters in the air quality control zone. Ryan Grimes has the details. The hydronic heaters ordinance was proposed by Van Lawrence and Matthew Cooper last month. Aside from the ban, $2.2 million would be moved from the Borough General Fund to supplement a stove voluntary removal and replacement program. Cooper says the measure could make great strides in lowering the amount of PM2.5 pollution in the borough air. So I think it's very narrowly tailored to really focus on the problem to achieve the goal of cleaning up the air. If we're taking the steps to show the EPA that we're serious about really cleaning up the air, targeting the worst problems in the community, then we're gonna avoid you know, heavier regulation by the state and the federal government about what types of devices we can burn, what we can burn in them, and when we can burn in them. So actually, I see this as something that's gonna protect a lot of our citizens' rights to heat their home in different ways. However, some assembly members have already expressed their disapproval of the ordinance. Assemblyman Lance Roberts says the measure is a gateway to more restrictions on home heating appliances in the future. It goes to a place the borough has never gone before. You know, we've never gone and basically done this taking on people. Now, I mean, you do it if someone doesn't pay their taxes. You know, they don't do something they're supposed to do. But here's something where somebody could be burning perfectly fine. They're operating their stove meticulously. They got totally dry wood. They're working it. And they even, some of these people even use the change out program. And now we're going to say, no, you're not going to get to use that next winter. You've got to change it out. The assembly is scheduled to vote on the hydronic heaters ordinance during a regular meeting tomorrow night at the Borough Administrative Center. This is Ryan Grimes reporting. A Fairbanks man accused of killing his girlfriend in an accident while driving intoxicated pleaded guilty today in Fairbanks Superior Court. 28-year-old Kieran Duffy was originally charged with manslaughter but pleaded down to criminally negligent homicide. According to an affidavit, Duffy was the driver in a single vehicle rollover near 12 Mile Village that killed his girlfriend, 26-year-old Amber Evans. Troopers say Duffy denied operating the vehicle, but seatbelt impressions and other evidence indicated he was driving. Evans was reportedly thrown from the vehicle and pronounced dead on scene. Duffy's sentencing is set for August. Ben Eilson Junior Senior High School was the grand prize winner of $60,000 in the school in school supplies and products from the Follett Challenge. That challenge is a contest designed to give schools a place to share their unique stories about how they prepare their students for the 21st century. The school's winning project is called Aiming High at Eilson and shows how the students participate in the STEM pilot program, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. This program allows the school to work with the Air Force personnel to get career training ranging from the base medical clinics to jet aircraft maintenance. School librarian Nancy Woodward says this money will benefit all the district schools. And the faculty is very excited about getting resources that will support their curriculum that are up to date because our collection was a little bit old. Unfortunately, with funding, every time a year it goes down. And the really neat thing about this is we borrow a lot of things from other schools because our collection is smaller. And now we have interlibrary loan with every school in the whole school district. And now maybe Eilson can be a loaning school. So anybody in the whole school district can borrow our new things. So it's, it's a win-win for every library. When we come back, who would have thought that developing a coloring book could help a nonprofit agency? We'll explain about that. Also in this week's military report, Monty Bowen will tell us about the Air Force's Arctic Survival School and what they need to teach to save lives. Stay with us. Welcome back. Someone takes their own life every 15 minutes in the United States with ends more than 36,000 lives each year. On Saturday, April 30th, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention will conduct its Out of the Darkness Walk to bring awareness to suicide. Alaska has the highest rate of suicide per capita in the country, with almost double the national average according to data from the Statewide Suicide Prevention Council. Saturday's walk will start at the Antler Arch behind the Morris Thompson Cultural Center with opening ceremonies at 1040 a.m. We walk for a number of reasons. We walk for one, to remember our loved ones that we've lost to suicide. We also walk for hope and support of those who might be struggling right now. Our main goal is to one, raise awareness for suicide prevention and really bring that topic into the light. 
it's a it's a topic that has a lot of stigma to it and it's a topic that very much needs to be talked about Unity Outreach Incorporated is printing its own coloring books to help fund its mission and help people in serious need. Ryan Grimes joins us again with details about how the local nonprofit plans to sell the book in the tourism industry. Harvey Baumgartner is the CEO and evangelist for Unity Outreach. The nonprofit's mission is to help people become self sufficient after disaster and emergency. Baumgartner adds that providing resources to those in need can be costly. We have probably we pull on about 300 people per year to do all these great projects, but we still need funds. We still have to go to Home Depot or Lowell's or Safeway or somewhere, and if we don't have any cash flow, we can't, uh, it's very, very difficult. And you can see that we've got a little bit of everything. To help beat the overhead costs, Unity Outreach is partnering with artist Takenya Lampkin, who compiled an entire coloring book over the course of three years. The book will be sold at participating businesses with sponsorship opportunities available on each page. The target market is tourists that come and want to bring something back home to their grandkids or kids and can show them places that they were he where they've been around the state and things that they did. So that's where a lot of the stuff is the kinds of things that tourists would do in Alaska, but really well kind of um, broad representation of Alaska in general too. Baumgartner says the coloring book already has some sponsors, but adds that more are needed. So we cannot go to print yet until we get our sponsors and the sponsors will pay for the first print. You'll be able to take this book into your store, you can sell it, and you would be able to make something for your store, and then you would make something for Unity too. This is Ryan Grimes reporting. Survival and returning with honor is the mission when an airman goes down behind enemy lines. Airmen are trained to fight the enemy at all costs. But what if that enemy isn't a person, but the actual environment itself? Monty Bowen talks about the training for that kind of survival in this week's military report. Frostbite, hypothermia, starvation. To learn how to fight those enemies, airmen are sent to Arctic Survival School. The will to survive is an instinct, but the art of surviving must be taught. For nearly 70 years, the U.S. military has turned to the Air Force's Arctic Survival School near Eielson Air Force Base to learn how to stay alive in one of the harshest environments on Earth. Arctic Survival uh, is the oldest AATC course uh, in the history of the Air Force. School's been in operation continuously since 1946. And it is a, it is a very standardized course. I and mean, if you look at the syllabus from today versus back when they started, a lot of it's gonna be very similar, if not the same, because the art of survival in Alaska doesn't change a whole lot. Air crews fly over every kind of terrain and need to know what they will be up against if the plane goes down. You just egressed and you're out there. You're floating to the earth and all you see is thousands upon thousands of miles of nothingness, just trees and snow. It's gonna cause you to second guess yourself. It's gonna cause you to be a little bit nervous and those feelings are, are perfectly normal. You're not being a pansy, you're being realistic. And that's probably the hardest thing for people is that initial crap, I'm, I'm on the ground by myself in the middle of nowhere. What are you gonna do to make it through the night? What are you gonna do to make it through the next 48 hours? The first step to making it home alive is keeping their wits about them. The second is not freezing to death, since Alaska's average winter temperature is 17 below zero. A lot of people will quit long before they physically would have expired, just because it is so difficult, challenging, and, and fundamentally miserable to endure. The training they receive and how well they learn can mean the difference between life and death. This is Monty Bowen reporting. The Military Report is brought to you by Kendall Auto of Fairbanks. Coming up next in sports, Joe Cook has some clutch highlights from high school baseball and softball games. Also, there was some sweet Georgia Brown music playing at Ionelson Air Force Base yesterday. Find out why after this break.
Welcome back interior Alaska time to get you over the hump with the Wednesday sports cast. We have a special story about a pro basketball player visiting one of our local military bases. But first high school sports Tuesday night was the first matchup of the baseball season between the Lathrop Malamutes and West Valley Wolfpack. The crosstown rivals went tit for tat in a wild high scoring game. It was tied 16 to 16 after seven innings 16 to 16. Chase Reed was one of the heroes for Lathrop as he ripped the go ahead RBI in the eighth inning to give Lathrop the lead for good. Colin King was perfecto. He finished five for five with seven RBIs, a double and a triple and scored three runs for the Malamutes. West Valley's Trenton Woods paced the Wolfpack going four for six with an RBI, a double and scored three times as well. It was all about offense and Lathrop wins 19 to 17 in extra innings and improves to 3 and 0 while, while West Valley drops to 2 and 1. Allison and North Pole, who were also in a high scoring extra inning game, they were tied 15 to 15 at the end of the seventh out at Newton Field, but no final score, score was reported. So a pair of football scores in high school baseball last night. And out at the South of Davis Fields, there were more close games in softball. The Monroe Rams and Lathrop Malamutes met in a non conference game. It was the second game of a double header for the Rams on their opening night of softball. Maggie Wallace would bring home Morgan Adams with a single as the Rams gained a 10 to 6 advantage. Then later, they got their at bat and generated three runs to make it a 10 9 game. The Malamutes got one more at bat to extend or win the game. Jamie Hammond and the Monroe defense got three crucial outs and hold on for a 10 to 9 victory. It feels great, especially having like only three girls on our team have ever played softball before, so we weren't really expecting to like do that great. So especially having two wins the first night, it was great. Picking up a new sport is not easy. It's not fun all the time. It gets really frustrating, but everybody's keeping their spirits high, and I'm just really proud of everybody that's come out and how much they've improved so far. And this is only the first night, so I just can't wait to see where we are by the end of the season. The North Pole Patriots and West Valley Wolfpack had the early varsity softball game. It was tied 3-3 after one, but West Valley, they went up by four by the third inning. Sawyer Thompson had two home run blasts and finished with six RBIs for the Wolfpack to increase that lead. North Pole, they battled back a bit on a Carissa Ramos 2-1 single to make it a 7-5 game in the fourth inning. West Valley offense put up another four runs to pull away. Kyra Lum led the West Valley defense with, uh, from the circle with a complete game. Struck out, striking out nine batters, allowing three hits and two earned ones. West Valley wins it 11 to five. Yesterday wasn't an ordinary day at Allison Air Force Base. Taco Tuesday wasn't canceled, but some airmen and kids got to meet one of the world famous Harlem Globetrotters. Here's more. He came, he saw, wow. and tried it. He's played in all of the 50 states and in 77 countries, but on Tuesday, Chris Handles Franklin made his first visit to Allison Air Force Base. It's not every day that a professional athlete comes to visit Allison. The airmen were thrilled to show him what they do. You don't get this many opportunities to work around aircraft like this, and being able to tell people about it and actually show them what you do every day, so it's actually, it's quite a boost, personally, and it's very, very enjoyable seeing their faces light up when you show them some of the things that they don't get to see every day. During the tour, Franklin also visited the military dogs unit. They showed handles how they handle business. The real highlight of the tour was when Franklin out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, met the kids at the Allison Youth Center. He showed off his skills and delivered a message on anti-bullying. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do something you can't be somebody. It was well received. Bullying is not cool because um, because kids can get really hurt and hurt their feelings. It's not nice at all. Before he left, Handles had one last message for the interior. This base was just awesome. The people here were so friendly and, and so accommodating and just was an awesome experience for me. We're looking forward to all the people coming out. This is our 90th year. They'll see high flying slam dunks, amazing ball handling, great comedy, but most of all, they'll see a lot of smiles and, and memories that'll last a lifetime. And they'll see me handle, Chris, handles Franklin. Oh, oh, eh, 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 eh. 
We love Fairbanks. A kiss from Handles. Chris Handles, Franklin, and the Globe Trotters will be taking on the World All Stars on Sunday at 2 o'clock at the Carlson Center. I'll be making an appearance on the court as well, so don't miss it. Plus, Handles visits with our very own J.R. Lewis tomorrow morning on the Fairbanks Morning News. But that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for watching. The birthday boy, Mike Schultz, is up next with the weather, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back to the New Center Final for a Wednesday night. Mike Schultz with you once again talking about the weather. It was nice to see the rain this evening because it helps to reduce that uh, potential for fire danger. We always got to see that. And uh, as far as our weather is concerned, we're looking at the rain to be ending and uh, better conditions heading into the weekend. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Temperatures look like this today. Our high was 59, the low last night 41, the record high 70 degrees. In 2005, seven for the overnight low in 1909. Your sunrise and sunset, 16 hours and 40 minutes of daylight. That's a gain of seven minutes from yesterday. And looking at that uh, radar and satellite, you can see all that moisture that moved through the Fairbanks area early this evening, and it is behind it. We're not looking at much going on, so it looks like things should be clearing up and getting better. More rain falling across southeast Alaska. A few scattered showers around the Prince William Sound area, not even making it into the Anchorage area because it's being blocked out by the Chugach range there. As far as the rest of the state is concerned, you can see the rain falling around the Juneau and Ketchikan areas. Only 46 degrees for the high in Juneau. How about that? Anchorage 54, partly cloudy skies. More showers around the Kodiak region. 43 degrees though. Chilly. Cold Bay, even cooler, 42 degrees, cloudy skies, 54 for the high in Bethel, 42 at Nome, and Barrow, 25 degrees, not too bad, with a Fort Yukon at 47, 57 degrees. Lower 48 weather, not too much going on, on the west coast, a few scattered showers. The big news is the storms that were hammering the uh, deep south over the last day or so are starting to move out rapidly to the east. That's good news. They're losing a lot of their power, too. Although there is still quite a bit of rain and even some mixed rain and snow falling to the north uh, along this area of low pressure. And uh, what does it mean as far as the rest of the country is concerned? Well, out west, we're looking at another storm system taking shape that will once again be fueling the possibility of more severe thunderstorm activity across the uh, central plains with a jet stream way down to the south. And speaking of the jet stream, the new updated jet stream map, as you can see, another big trough of low pressure out to the west, even some snow maybe in the Salt Lake City area. More severe storms expected to the south over the weekend and over the uh, eastern half of the country too. All right, now taking a look at our weather fact for today, and it's uh, kind of a, a dreary one. In 2011, from the uh, deep south to the Tennessee Valley, 305 tornadoes in a two-day period killed 300, and that brought the death toll to the month of April, in the month of April, to 600, a very volatile month uh, in that year. But on the good news side, the thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather because next week the kids will be returning from uh, Joy Elementary School with lots of fun things to share with you. All right, here's our forecast. First of all, for the northern sections tomorrow, freezing drizzle for Barrow, showers for Nome, and also at Port Yukon. Here in the interior, well, it looks like just a few sprinkles for the Fairbanks area, but mostly sunny skies at Healy and scattered clouds expected at Delta Junction. Over southeast Alaska, we're looking at widespread rain uh, all the way from Juneau to Ketchikan, and the temperature is once again very cool. Over the southwest part of the state, rain expected for Cold Bay, light rain for Kodiak, and isolated showers for Bethel. And down around the Anchorage Bull, looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for Anchorage with showers for Valdez and Homer. Want to pass along one quick note, we have an ice jam warning. Yeah, it's that time of year already, the road to Eagle Village is closed due to flooding, but the city of Eagle is still accessible by the Taylor Highway. And they're expected to, this situation is not expected to get any worse because uh, of the temperatures that have been going on. But good to know and keep it updated. And as far as our forecast for tonight, the widespread showers we've had throughout the night are going to slowly diminish. 35 for the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast. Continue cloudy, a few sprinkles, but still looking at around 62 degrees. And the extended forecast, maybe some showers once again by Monday and Tuesday, but temperatures will be hovering right around the 60 degree mark each day. And overnight lows will also be very comfortable in the mid 30s to upper 30s. Taking a look at our photograph for tonight, this one was sent in by uh, Nancy Ellis in Delta Junction, a very deep red sunset. Gorgeous picture. As always, if you have a photograph to share, send to photos at ktbf11.com.
And before we go tonight, KTVF and Bailey's Furniture are teaming up again for the annual Spring Dream giveaway. That's right, Darrell. Watch the evening news for the first half of a word, then go to Bailey's Furniture for the second half and enter for a chance to win $2,500 in furniture. You're so correct, Mike. And the word this week is sleeper. All right. All right. And happy birthday. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very Mike much. Gone for his birthday, so it's an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. And that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, presidential candidate Ted Cruz today named Carly Fiorina as his running mate if he gets the GOP nomination. That's up next with Lester Holt. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. From all of us here at the News Center, have a phenomenal night. Good night.